again, it's me again. Cracked Rider performer Katie Stoll, again. I'm not sure if you've heard, but things have been a little crazy here in America lately. Carrie Fisher died. Russia hacked our election. Donald Trump was elected president. And millions of people worldwide marched in protest of his inauguration. A Trump presidency frightens people for many different reasons. But today, I'm going to focus on the threats his administration poses to women's rights. Because I myself am a lady and, I don't know, seems appropriate. I know that I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but if any of you aren't members of the choir, can you just hear me out, please? I'll be your best friend. Unfortunately, this subject matter isn't very funny. Fortunately, I've brought a bunch of fun hats to mix things up. Ho ho! So, why are women so afraid? One thing that is being threatened by this administration is Planned Parenthood. It seems like Planned Parenthood is always under fire, mainly because of one key issue, abortion. But what a lot of people don't know is that Planned Parenthood is about so much more than abortion. Pro-lifers frequently claim that abortions make up 94% of Planned Parenthood services, but that simply isn't true. According to their website, abortions only comprise about 3% of Planned Parenthood's annual services. Now, many people criticize that number because there are several different ways you can look at data, but the truth is the actual figure is somewhere in the 3% ballpark. My point being that the bulk of Planned Parenthood's funding actually goes to providing low-cost healthcare to women and men throughout the country. So what does that mean exactly? Well, it exactly means that most of their work is providing people with access to birth control, STD testing and treatment, cancer screenings, and sexual education. You might even say that most of their services aim to reduce abortions? Yes, you would say that, because that is the truth. Well, why is all of this so important? Why, I am glad you asked that, Katie. Outside of the fact that Republicans have vowed to defund Planned Parenthood. They have also vowed to repeal the ACA. Look, I, I understand that there are problems with the Affordable Care Act. I get it. And those things absolutely need to be addressed. But in terms of women's reproductive rights, the ACA has done so much to help a sister out. Not only does the ACA offer women annual cancer screenings, contraceptive coverage, and prenatal care, but it also banned gender rating, which is where insurance companies charge women more for their health coverage than men. That's right. Before the ACA, women used to pay about a billion dollars more for health care than men. It's crazy. And we stand to lose all of these things if the ACA is repealed, which makes it even more important that places like Planned Parenthood exists. Without the ACA, women will need an affordable health care option. Our lives are literally at stake here. Look, I understand and respect whatever your personal beliefs on abortion are, I do, but with so many things that are undeniably good about Planned Parenthood, why would we want to throw the baby out with the bathwater? <sighs> oh God, was that joke too much? Oh, wait, don't, uh, don't, 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 don't worry, ha uh ha. -huh. Here's another hat, huh? All better now. Let's talk about Mike Pence. Throughout his career, Mike Pence has worked against women's reproductive rights. Sure, the GOP has been against Planned Parenthood since the 70s, but what most people don't know is that Mike Pence sponsored the first bill to defund Planned Parenthood. Yeah, that's right. This whole thing started with him. Not only that, but as governor of Indiana, he gutted their funding on a state level. This led to the closure of Scotts County's only Planned Parenthood facility, which also happened to be its only HIV testing site. Two years later, Scotts County experienced an unprecedented HIV epidemic. Also, our new VP is super anti-abortion rights, which I guess isn't surprising. During the campaign, he was quoted saying, I long for the day that Roe versus Wade is sent to the ash heap of history, <laughs> even though the majority of Americans currently support a woman's right to choose, which is scary because unfortunately, Trump gets to fill at least one Supreme Court vacancy. So overturning Roe versus Wade might actually be a possibility. Not only that, but on his first day in office, our dear, dear Trumpet reinstated the global gag rule, which bans US foreign aid from going to any NGO that even discusses abortion services. But hey, at least he signed the executive order surrounded exclusively by white men, because apparently it's our body, their choice. Okay, feels like maybe it's a good time for a new hat. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, all better. On to the honorable Donald Trump. Look, Donald Trump scares a lot of people, but 
since he's already been accused of sexual assault by 12 different women, including his ex-wife and a teenager, it feels like the threat he poses to women is especially horrifying. Not only has he been accused of sexual assault, he was famously recorded as saying that he literally grabs women by the pussy. Whatever you want. Grab them by the pussy. I mean, he f***ing admitted it. Although, it did lead to some delightful protest signs, so at least there's that. He has repeatedly shown himself to be misogynistic in the way that he talks about women. Like when he dismissed Megyn Kelly as having blood coming out of her wherever. When he called Alicia Machado, Miss Piggy. Or when he tweeted, why is it necessary to comment on Ariana Huffington's looks? Because she's a dog who wrongfully comments on me. I know that there are many reasons that people voted for him, I do. But even if you did, can you please acknowledge that this is an aspect of his personality. Not calling it what it is, blatant misogyny, is to normalize it. And that is what is terrifying for women. Because when the most powerful man in the country shows us that something is okay, then suddenly other people think it's okay too. But it isn't okay, okay? Okay. And those are just the threats women face from his administration. Many states have already adopted the heartbeat bill and the House of Representatives recently passed legislation banning tax dollars to be used on abortions. So, you know, that's not good. So, what does one do if one is worried about these things? Well, obviously you could support Planned Parenthood, and I don't just mean by making donations in Mike Pence's name. There are all sorts of ways you can volunteer your time, like organizing events or training to teach educational workshops in high schools. You also could support the Center for Women's Reproductive Rights, which uses the law to advance reproductive freedom. And perhaps most important, you can continue paying attention, read reliable news sources, follow public figures whose work you respect. We have to know when big things are happening in Congress so that we can make our voices heard. Show up to march. Call your representatives. They are here to listen. And the crazy thing is, they actually do. Oh, look, I've got one more hat left. <laughs> what a hilarious and perfect way to end this very, very, very funny video. Thanks so much for watching this video. Do all the things, the liking, the subscribing. Also, hit me up in the comments. Let me know how many hats you think I had left to try on. The person who guesses correctly will know that they guessed correctly. And uh, that's an honor.